The, the virtual Carleton campus is a collaboration between Carleton and Avea. And the world is uh, a representation of Carleton's campus. So basically it looks like Carleton. It has the Tory Building Library, Azraeli Pavilion. Well, it looks like a video game, and it's based on a video game engine, so there's no surprise there. And you can actually go into the buildings. There's an auditorium, uh, there's office space, the library has uh, some individual rooms, meeting rooms and stuff like that. So it was created here at Carleton, Carleton Prof and Carleton students working on it. So the environment that we have in particular is based on the Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is one of the most popular game engines out there that allow you to create 3D virtual environments, 3D realistic environment. Um, the virtual excavation part of it is built from the excavation records of a small excavation I did in 2003 in the village of Shawville in West Quebec. So it represents a two meter by two meter excavation pit with individual contexts and features and artifacts scattered in three dimensions in the virtual world just as they were found in the real world. Two years ago we started working on the Carlton Virtual Project and when I say we, uh, I'm talking about myself, uh, my students, graduate and undergraduate student, and also some other faculty members who were interested in working with on this project. So we created a prototype over the summer and fall of two years ago and then we proposed that to a series of faculty members here at Carleton. I was just so intrigued by it, it's really cool. So you log in, you, you log in as an avatar, and you can change the gender, the clothing, the color of the hair, skin, put glasses on, different shoes. So that's kind of cool, especially for students, it's fun for them to do. You go quite quickly from saying, oh, my, my avatar or my character jumped into the pit to Oh, I jumped into the pit. It quickly becomes an extension of yourself into the virtual world. It gives students more confidence. Uh, and because they, uh, the an anonymity of being an avatar, as opposed to standing in front or face to face with another classmate or in front of their teacher, they're um, less apprehensive about using their their language, which is great, which is what we want, right? So they're more likely to take risk with their language. Um, I noticed in one case in particular, this is one story I like to sort of tell, is that a girl that was typically really shy in my class and didn't put her hand up uh, in the environment became the leader. So the dynamics in the group, she was the leader of the group, she made the decisions, and it was just really interesting to see how much confidence uh, being in the environment gave her. For students, it's it's a place that's safe for them to make mistakes. The very first time I was ever on a on a real excavation when I was 18, I was in terror all the time of doing something wrong. And there wasn't much instruction then on what to do. And that's not fair to a student. So by letting students work in an atmosphere or a, a world where they can make mistakes, that can be reset, that can be excavated in different ways to contrast the different kinds of ways of knowing that come out of that, I think is a really powerful learning opportunity. You are with your peers, you can communicate with them in real time, you can present things, you can discuss things, you can have meetings, you can work on documents and things together. So I think for language learning, the environment is really, really rich and has some really great um, possibilities. For archaeology, it's really appropriate because so much of archaeology is about reconstructing and thinking through in three dimensions and creating information from not only three-dimensional materials but also four-dimensionals because there's a, there's a time element to the three-dimensional positioning. I don't think it's going to replace the traditional teaching and that's what I have to make sure is really clear message but it's in addition to and it will complement or be an alternative teaching method and the environment is is really rich in terms of interaction and engagement whether it's teacher teacher student teacher in a sense the way that we look at it uh, is the third generation of educational environment. So if you think about classroom as the traditional first generation of an educational environment and the whole paradigm of 
distance learning as a second generation and say, okay, you can stay home and watch films or read things on your own pace. The virtual environments are, in our point of view, are the third generation of this, which is basically a virtual space that brings both of those two paradigms together. It's a tool and it has its place in um, a professor's toolkit when it's appropriate to use. So uh, if we are creative and just imagine what it can be used for, I think it's, it's awesome.